news leader, this is the MTN 10 o'clock news. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Russ Riesinger. The Montana Department of Corrections asking you to be on the lookout for a woman who escaped from the Montana Women's Prison in Billings this afternoon. Prison staff discovered that 50 year old Lisa Nestor was not in that facility about 330. It's the first escape at the prison in around six years. Nestor is five feet seven, 135 pounds with brown hair and brown eyes. She's believed to have connections in Carter County, Montana and Granora, North Dakota. Nestor is not believed to pose a specific threat, but the public is being advised not to approach her and to call local law enforcement or the U.S. Marshals Service at 406 247 7030. Well, Billings police officers have their work cut out for them with gun related incidents tripling in one month from this time last year. Tonight, Q2's Andrea Lutz takes a look at the data and learns there's an unsavory trend playing out. In recent weeks, the Billings Police Department has responded to an uptick in shootings in our community. So we're reaching out to them to see if they have answers as to why. We've all seen nationally uh, the increase in gun violence, and I don't think our community is immune to it. Captain Neil Lawrence with the Billings Police Department says a rash of recent shootings has kept detectives busier than normal because solving these crimes is proving difficult. They don't go very far because we have people who don't want to cooperate. Uh, we don't have a lot of evidence to go on. Sometimes victims don't want to cooperate. Um, sometimes witnesses don't want to come forward. Data requested from BPD shows in a span of three years, gun related incidents are up. In April, they've tripled. From 2019, there were five. In 2020, six. But this year, 18 gun related calls to police. 10 of which are shootings. In May, the upward trend seems to continue with one in 2019, two in 2020, but this year, some 10 gun related incidents so far, five of which are actual shots fired. Guns have always been a problem. Um, they're always a concern, um, but uh, unfortunately there has been this uptick nationally and, and we're seeing a little of it right now. But there's one crime fighting element that Lawrence says could really help. Just be the best witness that you can be if you see something and notify the police. The technology we have now, um, I mean, our detectives are always going back and utilizing that to uh, uh, go backwards and see maybe where a suspect of a crime came from or went to, and they utilize a video from businesses and homes to do that. Especially when he says no one else seems to be talking. In Billings, Andrea Lutz, MTN News. Thanks, Andrea. Well, last February, Governor Greg Gianforte signed a bill into law that allows people to carry concealed firearms without a permit in most locations. It will have specific impacts for college campuses like the University of Montana. House Bill 102 limits how college administrators can regulate guns on campus starting June 1st. The new law means institutions can no longer prohibit individuals outright from concealed carry or open carry of a firearm on campus with certain exceptions such as an athletic or entertainment event open to the public. The Montana University system is grappling with how to approach the legislation while UM officials say they are preparing for changes. You know, we have a responsibility to be ready to go on June 1st for if this law is put into place. And so we're continuing to work with our partners across the state to ensure that we can have the safeguards and policies in place to keep our campus as safe as it is today going forward on June 1st. The Board of Regents next meeting is set for May 26th. The fighting intensified in the Gaza Strip today as Israeli aircraft leveled a multi-story building housing a bank affiliated with the Islamic militant group Hamas. It was the third Hamas bank destroyed in Israeli airstrikes in this week's deadly escalation and fighting as international efforts at a ceasefire stepped up. Israel appeared to be looking to inflict intensified damage on Hamas, which controls the Gaza Strip and has fired hundreds of rockets into Israel. The Gaza violence increasingly spilled over into turmoil elsewhere. As the president uh, conveyed in his statement, uh, Israel has the right to self-defense. Uh, our focus uh, remains on uh, continuing to use every lever at our disposal uh, to de-escalate the situation on the ground. I think it's also important to remind people Hamas is a terrorist organization. Uh, Hamas does not represent uh, the uh, views, the families, 
uh, the people who are suffering, uh, all of the Palestinian people who are suffering as a result of this violence. Um, but there's no justification for 1,500 rockets uh, coming from Hamas uh, into Israeli uh, community, is communities in Israel either. Now onto the civil war taking place within the GOP. Today, New York Representative Elise Stefanik was chosen as the House's third ranking leader, replacing Wyoming's Liz Cheney, who was demoted for rejecting former President Trump's claims that the election was stolen. I believe that voters determine the leader of the Republican Party and President Trump is the leader that they look to. We have to get people to vote for us, and we can't do that if we are a party that's based on a foundation of lies. I think what right. the former president's doing is dangerous. Now, Mr. Trump, who pushed for Cheney's ouster, released a statement congratulating Stefanik, saying in part, the House GOP is united and the Make America Great Again movement is strong. Well, time for a first look at weather, and the viewer pictures today had one thing in common. There's something hidden in plain sight. That's right. We're going to start off this one with the crescent moon that John shared. Us. Then you can see a little bit of earth shine. You can see that darker outline, but that's not the hidden part. That's over. You see a small little light, and that's mercury. It's usually pretty hard to pick out, and it's going to be really getting a little bit brighter all the way through about Monday. How about this one? Yeah, up on the rims, Larry's been looking at some of the hidden scenes up in the rims. Can you pick out the horse? his head right in there. Once you see it, it's hard to not see it again. So thanks for sharing that one. And how about a, a beautiful sky to get started today in Clark, Wyoming? And that shared this one. But if you look down into the lower left hand corner, there's PJ the rooster kind of hanging out. We can't hear him, but we know that we got a little to crow about with the forecast. We'll show you the details on that coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Ed. Billings Trail Net looking to add another piece to the puzzle to complete the marathon loop. Last year, the Skyline Trail atop the rims was completed, and now there's a plan to connect the rims to the valley. Q2 Shaquille Cozart has more. Well, in order to make Zimmerman Trail safer for cyclists and people that want to walk in the area, Billings Trailnet has announced the start of a community fundraiser for what will be called the Stagecoach Trail. The trail would allow people in the community to commute between the valley and the rims on foot, bike, and will be wheelchair accessible. Billings Trailnet began fundraising on May 6 at the Yellowstone Valley Gives Community Fundraiser. And for 24 hours of this amazing, you know, 24 hour giving event for all the nonprofits in Billings, we had raised 13, almost $13,000. While $13,000 is a fraction of what it will take to build the Stagecoach Trail, Drake says there's still much to be done in the meantime. So it's going to be a really expensive trail. It's going to be between three and four million dollars to build it. So trying to raise that kind of money from Billings Trail Net would be a pretty tall order. But what we can do is we can engineer it. Billings Trailnet spent about $200,000 engineering the now completed Skyline Trail. But as the planning and fundraising continues for the Stagecoach Trail, Drake says people are getting excited for a trail that will finally connect the valley to the rims. Talk to a lot of cyclists because I know I, I know a lot of cyclists. I am one. And uh, and they, they're always asking me about the Stagecoach Trail. Reporting in Billings, I'm Shaquille Cozart with MTN News. Thanks, Shaquille. And Drake says if you want to donate, you can head to visit billingstrailnet.org and hit the donate icon, or you can head to this story on ktvq.com. Well, the five largest local high schools are constantly in competition. It's usually on the field or on the court, but each year they also take that rivalry to the wall. And the votes are in. The winner of the 2021 War of the Walls is Senior High. Athena Renova is the artist behind the mural painted on the side of the Grand Avenue Master Lube store. She says the Bronx breaking through a brick wall represents the diversity at senior high and the students working to break down barriers for minority and disadvantaged students. West High comes in with a very close second this year. That mural painted by Cole Arroyo is on the side of the King Avenue Master Lube and Laurel High School comes in third painted by Grace Tim, a senior at Laurel. The painting competition coincides with the annual Grad Day fundraising event for the school all night drug and alcohol free graduation celebrations. And you can help our kids celebrate safely. Each school adopts a master lube site to do their fundraising, a barbecue, a car wash and donations and every dime customers spend tomorrow, Saturday, May 15th from 7 a.m. until 6 p.m. goes toward those school parties. To learn more, you can head to this story on KTVQ.com. Head on the MTN News at 10 here on Q2. 
tuning up. The Babcock Theater will be filled with the sounds of the symphony this weekend. And the Bulls are back in town. Highlights as the PBR gets underway in Billings. From Montana's news leader, you're watching the MTN 10 o'clock 